Hello friends, today we are going to see the 3D transformations that is the concatenation operation. Okay, first we will do the manual calculation and then we will write a C program and try to get the similar analysis from the C program. So let's get started. So here I have drawn the uh, tetrahedron. Okay. So four triangular surfaces. Okay, four triangular surfaces with four vertices. Okay, with coordinates P as 5, 5, 5, Q as 10, 5, 10. Then R as 15, 5, 5, and S as 10, 15, 8. Okay, so first uh, thing that we have to do is we have to scale this tetrahedron PQRS two times to its original size, keeping point S fixed. Okay, keeping point S fixed. So when we are trying to keep point S fixed, okay, what we will have to do? We will have to first translate the point S to the origin. Okay, translate the point S to the origin. So it will be called as back translation. Then <coughs> we will have to apply the scaling operation. Okay, scaling operation. And in this case, since it is told to keep uh, to scale the uh, object two times to its original size so that means i have all my three scaling factors okay all my three scaling factors which are uh, sx equal to sy equal to sz equal to p so i have uniform scaling to be applied so then i will perform the scaling with these scaling factors and then once the scaling is done i will again translate the object back to its original place so i will translate point s back to the uh, its current location or original location that is 10 15 x so that will be the forward translation so let's get started so the new transform coordinates new transform coordinates will be i will start from the extreme right with object matrix keeping at the extreme right multiplied by the translation inverse or back translation then I will have a scaling matrix and then I will translate the reference point back to its original location so this is the operation that I will be performing so let us write down all the matrices okay so this is the forward translation so i have written over here the object matrix okay so the object matrix representation is again similar manner i will be representing it point wise so p q r and s so p q r s i have written them in column wise so this is my x coordinate y coordinate z coordinate respectively for each point okay so then i have to keep point s fixed okay then i have to keep point s fixed okay i will be translating this point back to the origin and again forward translating it to its original location so since we are writing these matrices in this order okay this is the forward translation matrix so this is 1 0 0 and then 10 0 1 0 15 0 0 1 8 and 0 0 0 1 this is a three dimensional translation matrix ok then I have scaling matrix that also is three dimensional so it is sx 0 0 so it is 2 0 0 0 0 2 0 0 0 0 0 and zero 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 one. Okay, multiplied by the back translation matrix. So it is one zero zero minus two zero one zero. 15 0 0 1 minus 8 0 0 0 1 this is the back translation matrix multiplied by the object matrix which 
which we have written over here. So it is 5, 5, 5. And in the object matrix, I tend to write in column wise because they represent the coordinates. So 10, 5, 10, 1. 15, 5, 5, 1. And then 10, 15, 8, 1. Okay. So now we can perform multiplication okay, in any sequence. Okay, first you can let's say multiply these two and then you can multiply these two. It will get two matrices, okay, and then you can further multiply them to get the final answer. So I will first multiply these two. I will get two zero zero ten then zero. 0, 15, 0, 0, 2, 8, and then 0, 0, 0, 1. Okay, multiplied by. Okay, then I will multiply these two matrices. So that is this matrix multiplied by this matrix. Okay, I will directly write the answer. So it is minus 5, 0, 5, 0, minus 10, minus 10, minus 10, 0, minus 3, 2, minus 3, 0, and 1, 1, 1. Okay, so this is the order 3 by 4 and uh, sorry 4 by 4 so everywhere you can see the matrices of the order 4 by 4 since we have taken the tetrahedral which has 4 vertices okay so the last row of the object matrix is entirely 1 because we are representing in the homogeneous coordinates so when I find the answer of this multiplication I will get the transform coordinates of the so that I will write here. So when I do the multiplication, I will again represent it or write it in a uh, column wise so that we get the coordinates. Okay, we understand what are the coordinates. So 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. then 10, minus 5. 5, 2, 1, and then 10, 15, 8, 1. So this is the <coughs> transform coordinates of the uh, this object that is tetrahedron. So tetrahedron's new coordinates will be 0 minus 5, 2, 10 minus 5, 12. 20 minus 5, 2 and 10, 15, 8. As you can see, since we kept point S as fixed, okay, so coordinates of point S are unchanged. Okay, they remain to be 10, 15, 8. Okay, they remain to be 10, 15, 8. Okay, all the remaining three coordinates are changed. Okay. So the object got scaled by keeping point S fixed twice of its original size. So I hope this is understood. Okay, the next question is, we have to rotate the same tetrahedron. Okay, we have to rotate the same tetrahedron PQRS uh, by 30 degrees. Okay, about Z axis. Now, since it is a 3D rotation, so I can have rotation about X axis, I can have rotation about Y axis, I can have rotation about Z axis. So that is not a problem. So clear that it is mentioned to carry out rotation about Z axis. This is going to be a counterclockwise direction rotation. Okay, by default, by 30 degrees. So counterclockwise is positive, that is why it is positive 30 degrees. Keeping point is fixed. Okay, keeping point is fixed. So basically what we have to do, we have to keep this point as fixed 
and rotate this about z okay rotate this about z by 30 degrees so how that will be achieved that will be also achieved in more or less similar manner since we have been given a reference to rotate the tetrahedron we will first translate that reference to origin carry out the rotation and again translate that reference back to its original position so we will have again uh, back translation okay back translation by the same amount minus 10 minus 15 minus 8 then the rotation about z by 30 degrees and then forward translation by the same amount to bring point s back to its original position so if i have to write okay if i have to write this so the new transformed coordinates after the rotation are given by i have the object matrix over here okay multiplied by the translation inverse okay multiplied by the rotation z rotation about z and multiplied by the forward translation multiplied by the forward translation so as far as the rotation here is concerned okay they have given theta as 30 degrees so they have given theta as 30 degrees so let's see if i want to write down okay if i want to write down here i will just mention it over here theta 30 degrees so cos of theta is cos of 30 is 0.866 sin theta that is sin of 30 that is 0.5 okay, so I will be using these values so let us write the uh, matrices so here I have the translation forward translation say the point S is same so this matrix is going to be 1 0 0 0, 1, 0, 15 0, 0, 1, 8 0, 0, 0, 1 multiplied by the rotation matrix the rotation is carried out about z axis so rotation z <coughs> so that is cos theta minus sin theta sin theta cos theta so cos theta when we have just written it is 0.866 sin theta that is minus sin theta so minus 0 0.5 0 0 then sin theta cos theta 0 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 0 1 so that is the rotation matrix upon side then I have the back translation matrix so it is 1 0 0 minus 10, 0, 1, 0, minus 15, 0, 0, 1, minus 8, and 0, 0, 0, 1. Now that translation matrix multiplied by the object matrix. Now the object matrix is the same object matrix we are taking. So it is 5, 5, 5, 1. you can decide the sequence which two you can multiply okay. the only thing that you cannot do is you cannot change the order so you can multiply this to this okay you can multiply these two then you can multiply these two and then remaining you can multiply the answer so and follow the same method which we have been following and multiply these two first then i will multiply these two and then i will multiply the answers and then i will get the final <coughs> transform coordinates so when I multiply first so I get the matrix as 0 0.866 0 0.0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 
minus of 0.5 then 0 10 then 0 0.5 0 0.8 6 6 0 15 then 0 0 0 0 0 1 okay, further multiplied by okay, the multiplication between these two matrices okay, multiplication between these two matrices so that comes out to be minus 5 minus 10 minus 3 1 0 minus 10 2 1 5 minus 10 minus 3 1 and 0 0 0 1 ok so when I multiply these two ok when I multiply these two I will get the new transformed coordinates of the tetrahedron. So let us multiply. <coughs> the answer comes out to be and then I will represent it column wise so 
once all the columns are increased then we increase the row then we increment the row but since we want to represent this uh, matrix for the coordinates so coordinates are arranged in this matrix according to column so what we will be doing we will be incrementing row okay and then we will be incrementing column so that's why i have written it in this way so first d is less than n okay and c is less than n minus 1 okay c is less than n minus 1 so this will uh, make sure that the uh, coordinates are assigned okay in column wise order and the last entire row okay last entire row is 1 because it's a homogeneous coordinate representation so first of n minus 1 comma d or n minus 1 d is equal to 1 so this will uh, give us the entire row as 1 okay then we just want to represent uh, we just want to display whatever object has been entered by the user for his reference so using the same again for loops for c equal to this can be a usual for loop because we have got all the values okay we have got all the values in the matrix okay so this is a usual for loop this is going to increment columns and then it is going to uh, ultimately increment rows okay because i what i said m represents rows m represents columns so what it was doing here it was incrementing columns okay after we increment all rows okay so that's what it was doing in the first loop while assigning the values while displaying we go back to the original procedure okay so this will uh, display the object matrix then we have to first back translate okay back translate so we are using two for loops for i equal to 0 i less than 4 i plus plus j equal to 0 j less than 4 j plus plus wherever it is i equal to j okay that trans of i j i am replacing it by 1 and else it is 0 so i first make this matrix as the identity matrix and then at the required locations that is location number 0 3 1 3 and 2 3 okay remember we start the indexing from 0 so that is why 0 is counted so 0 1 2 3 so when i say 3 it is actually the fourth column okay it is actually the fourth column okay so the uh, first two fourth column I am uh, writing the value as minus 1 into first of 0, 3. Okay. Because why I am multiplying it by minus 1? Because I have to first take it back to the origin. So that's why I am multiplying it by minus 1. Same I same am doing with trans of 1, 3, trans of 2, 3. Okay. And then I am representing the back translation matrix. Okay. Back translation matrix. And then I am multiplying that back translation matrix with the object matrix using three for loops okay, using three for loops so for i equal to 0 i less than 4 i plus plus for j equal to 0 j less than n j plus plus for k equal to 0 k less than 4 k plus plus now what we are ensuring over here while we carry out the multiplication the trans of i k is multiplied with first of kj ok so number of columns of the first uh, matrix should be equal to number of rows of the second matrix if we want to multiply two matrices so that condition we are keeping here and that, that is the reason why we don't have to check again okay because uh, the k loop is the loop where it is going to actually uh, multiply stepwise okay multiply stepwise so once the multiplication is done okay the answer is stored in sum okay that we assign in uh, back to mult1 okay, so that mult1 is going to store the first multiplication of these two matrices answer okay we make some zero again okay then we perform scaling okay so as as it was required to perform scaling okay to uh, twice of the original size okay so scaling factor everywhere is two okay again i assign for loops successive for loops so for i equal to zero i less than four i plus plus j equal to zero j less than four j plus plus wherever it is i equal to j I put the value of uh, scaling matrix. Okay, so all, all the major diagonal positions, one comma one, two comma two, three comma three, and four comma four, will get value of two. And at all other positions, the value will be zero. Now I have to change the value at the four comma four position. Okay, in C programming, it is three comma three position. So scale of three comma three, I'm changing it to one. Okay, scale of three comma three, I'm changing it to one, and I'm displaying the matrix. Okay, I'm displaying the matrix and then I carry out the multiplication again so I have already got the answer by multiplying the object matrix and back translation matrix 
okay in melt one so then this scaling matrix i will multiply with melt one using the same strategy so i equal to zero i less than four i plus plus i have three for loops j equal to zero j less than n j plus plus and k equal to zero k less than four k plus plus so again scale of i k multiplied with melt one of k j so this column is same as the second matrix row so multiplication will happen and the answer will be stored in sum 2 and i am reassigning it to melt 2 okay reassigning it to melt 2 okay so now the answer is with melt 2 matrix okay then i will perform the forward translation so i will first uh, generate the translation matrix forward translation matrix again with the same strategy so two for loops and then wherever it is i equal to j i will assign it to 1 so all the diagonal elements will become 1 and all other elements will become 0 and then i have to assign the 1 comma 4 2 comma 4 and 3 comma 4 positions in the original translation matrix so here the trans 2 0 comma 3 will be first of 0 comma 3 see this object matrix is stored in first uh, array so that uh, is still in existence okay that is still in existence so we can still assign so trans of trans 2 of 0 3 is assigned uh, to first of 0 3 or in other words first of 0 3 is actually the value is going into trans 2 of 0 3 same with trans 2 of 1 3 and trans 2 of 2 3 okay and then i will represent those matrices okay i will represent the matrix by this printf statement and then i will carry out the third multiplication so now the answer is with melt 2 matrix so i will multiply trans 2 and melt 2 okay keeping the same strategy three for loops ensure that the columns of the first row uh, matrix are equal with the rows of the second matrix and the answer will be eventually stored in melt 3 of ij and then at the end using the printf statement i am going to represent the answer or showcase the answer on the output screen using again two for loops i equal to 0 i less than 4 i plus plus j equal to 0 j less than n j plus plus i am going to uh, print off the values in the matrix okay in the sequence so this is the program that i have written okay, let us just try to uh, compile the program so the program has been compiled there are no errors okay, i will just try to run the program so now remember we have to enter the coordinates in xyz 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 value okay so this phi 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 the first p value then 10 phi 10 that is the q value then 15 phi phi that is the pqr value and then at the end it is 10 So we have got 12 total values, okay, 12 total values. So 5, 5, 5, 10, 5, 10, 15, 5, 5, and 10, 15. When I press enter, the calculation will be carried out. So as you can see, this particular first matrix over here, okay, this is the object matrix that we have represented. So 5, 5, 5, 1, 10, 5, 10, 1, 15, 5, 5, 1, 10, 15, 8, 1. Then the second is the back translation matrix. So 100 0, 0, minus 10, 010 0, 0, minus 15, 0, 0, 001 minus 8, 0, 0, 0, 001. Then the rotation matrix, uh, sorry, scaling matrix. So it is 2000, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, this multiplied by this multiplied by this multiplied by this or this pre multiplied by this pre multiplied by this pre multiplied by this we get this answer the new transform coordinates of the object are 0 minus 5 2 okay 10 minus 5 12 20 minus 5 2 and 10 15 8 you can cross check the 10 15 8 in the object matrix remains to be 10 15 8 in the transformed coordinate matrix Okay, so I hope you have understood this. Okay, I hope you have understood this. Next up, we will see the rotation program. Okay, next up, we will see the rotation program. So, this is a program for the 3D concatenation.
rotation that is 3D rotation ok so program for performing 3D rotations to rotate a tetrahedron PQRS about Z axis by 30 degrees keeping point as fixed ok I have included stdi.h, conio.h, math.h ok again all the things remain same ok all the things remain same so first I am asking user to put the values asking user to put the values so enter coordinates of object matrix and the user is going to enter the coordinates in xyz 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 manner so okay, for this uh, purpose I am writing the scanf statement in such a way that uh, in that matrix okay, the column will be incremented every time and uh, once all the columns are incremented then the row will be incremented you can see c less than n minus 1 sorry all the rows will be incremented ok and then the columns will be incremented so usual way is incrementing columns and then incrementing rows but here since we want to represent x y z coordinates in a column manner so first we will increment the rows and then we will increment the columns ok so that is achieved by these two for loops d equal to 0 d less than n d plus plus c equal to 0 c less than n minus 1 remember i have taken n equal to 4, n equal to 4 ok and indexing starts from 0 ok so when I say less than 4 so I have 4 basic values of that variable so starting from 0, 1, 2, 3 ok and here I have uh, only 3 values because I am uh, writing this for loop only for incrementing rows 3 times and the last row in every iteration I am keeping it as n minus 1 of d is equal to 1 because it is homogeneous coordinates ok then I will represent that matrix or display the matrix onto the output screen using the same for loops c equal to 0 c less than m c plus plus d equal to 0 d less than m d plus plus and then I will uh, using this slash t ok I will uh, display the matrix that matrix is first cd ok so the object matrix is stored in the two dimensional array first ok then I will perform the back translation matrix ok this back translation matrix remains to be same so I have two for loops i equal to 0 i less than 4 j equal to 0 j less than 4 wherever it is i equal to j I will write 1 wherever it is not I will write 0 so if else ok and uh, the values ok the translation values these are translation vectors I am writing so trans of 0 3 is minus 1 into first of 0 3 trans of 1 3 is minus 1 into first of 1 3 and trans of 2 3 is minus 1 into first of 2 3 so I have populated the translation back translation matrix ok and I will display that back translation matrix ok with this printed command and slash t and then slash n and then I will carry out the multiplication so I require 3 for loops ok 3 for loops and I will ensure the matrix uh, order is maintained so the the first matrix number of columns are equal to second matrix number of rows so here I have trans of ik multiplied with first of kj ok trans of ik multiplied with first of kj then I carry out this uh, matrix multiplication ok the answer initially is stored in sum and then I assign sum to mult1 so the object matrix pre multiplied by back translation matrix ok the answer is now stored in mult1 matrix ok then I carry out the rotation matrix so first uh, I am trying to find the value of theta so this theta value I will have to first convert into radians because when I uh, use math function that is when I include math library and use cos theta and sin theta functions ok the value of theta should be in radians so I am converting it into radians by pi into uh, by multiplying the theta which is in degrees that is 30 degree multiplied by pi by 1 so it is converted into its equivalent radians and then I am carrying out the uh, for loops, two for loops to uh, represent the matrix so wherever it is i equal to j ok rotation of ij I am making as cos theta so at all diagonal locations the values will become cos theta and else at all other remaining locations the values will become zero now what I have to do, I have to convert the values ok, I have to convert the values so I have to replace the zeros at these locations so remember the matrix is cos theta minus sin theta 0 0 sin theta cos theta 0 0 
so this is the 0 1 position I have to first make as minus sin theta and 1 0 position I have to first make as sin theta ok the diagonal positions I have already made cos theta ok now I have to also make these remaining two diagonal positions as 1 1 ok so root of 2 2 I am making 1 1 and root of 3 3 I am making 1 so that I have the rotation matrix that is rotation about z axis ok in 3 dimensions and then I will print the values of the matrix ok using the slash t and slash n and then I will carry out the next multiplication using the 3 for loop so for i equal to 0 i less than 4 j equal to 0 j less than n and k equal to 0 k less than 4 then again ensure that the first row uh, the first column ok of the matrix is equivalent with the uh, row of the second matrix the multiplication is carried out in the sum 2 and then I will assign sum 2 to mult 2 so now mult 2 carries the multiplication now I will construct the forward translation matrix again in a similar manner so i equal to 0 i less than 4 j equal to 0 j less than 4 wherever it is i equal to j I will put trans 2 of i j as 1 so this is going to be the diagonal positions and at all other positions it is 0 and then I will uh, assign the values for the translation vector so this is going to be the forward translation so trans 2 of 0 3 is first of 0 3 trans 2 of 1 3 is first of 1 3 and trans 2 of 2 3 is first of 2 3 ok the object matrix is still stored in first uh, ij matrix ok then I will display the matrix using slash t and slash n and then I will carry out the third multiplication so the three for loops and the mult 2 is getting pre multiplied by trans 2 ok the answer is same, then stored in the mult 3 matrix and then using the printf statement that is new transpose coordinates and using two for loops I am going to display the values of the uh, mult 3 matrix ok so I hope this is understood this is exactly same program with the only change in the rotation matrix ok so I will first try to compile this there are no errors and then I will run the program remember I have to enter the coordinates again in xyz manner so it is 5 5 5 10 So as you can see over here the first is the object matrix so 5 5 5 1 10 5 10 1 15 5 5 1 10 15 8 1 and the second matrix is back translation matrix since we want to uh, rotate the tetrahedron okay about z axis keeping point s fixed so s we are taking to origin so this is 1 0 0 minus 10 0 1 0 minus 15 0 0 1 minus 8 0 0 0 1 then the rotation matrix so this is cos theta that is 0.866 sin theta that is minus 0.4999 ok this is very accurate because we have using we are using float variable then 0.4999 ok we take this as 0.5 if so we take this as 0.5 but this is this is going to include almost 8 places after the decimal point so the accuracy is very good 0.866 then 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1. Okay, so this is the rotation matrix and then I have the forward translation matrix 1 0 0 10 0 1 0 uh, 15 0 0 1 8 and 0 0 0 1 and when this all gets multiplied okay, I get the answer this 10.669 and 8.8351 14.99 16.9 was carried out about z axis by keeping point keeping point s fixed the coordinates of point s are unchanged ok so and these answers you can see exactly matches with the manual answers which we have just calculated so I hope you have understood the procedure of how to construct a C program and how to display the matrices on the output screen and carry out different concatenations likewise you can you can have any number of matrix getting multiplied and you can just keep on writing the programs ok so I hope this is understood ok I will see you next time with more such interesting content on computer graphics and CAD thank you very much